September we met. I can tell by your smile. You hadn't been with a good girl like me in a while. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope that you guys have a safe and prosperous 2019. Anyway, I decided to bring this video to you today regarding the Black conscious community. Now, one of the reasons what attracted me to YouTube in the first place is the likes of Umar Johnson and Tariq Nasheed and Zaza Ali and Professor Griff, a lot of the Black conscious community. That's why I tuned in to YouTube in the first place. But what I have noticed over time is that there is a lot of beef between these people and there's a lot of cunning between these people. Basically, the Black conscious community is turning into trash. I'm sorry, but it just is. Before I disliked Umar Johnson, I actually used to like him. I liked him a lot. I think the man is intelligent. I think the man is eloquent. He is well-spoken and he has a lot of gems to share. But unfortunately, his greed precedes his intellect, in my opinion. He has become greedy and he has nothing to show for it. Matter of fact, I was one of those people that gave money early on for his academy, his boys school. And, you know, what is it? Almost five years? Nothing. So I've become quite jaded with a lot of people in the black conscious community. I just have. I can't. I, I just have. I don't know what else to say. I was also a fan early on of Boyce Watkins. A lot of you know who Boyce Watkins is. He's the bald headed short dude, ch chubby, stout, short dude um, that talks about financial literacy. And, you know, when it came to Boyce, I was like enamored with him because he used to talk about stock market and black people owning their business, you know, owning their own businesses. I mean, I was really digging it. And, you know, he's always about black this and black that and black that until I also noticed that this guy wasn't who he said he was. He just isn't. It turned out a few months ago, early in 2018, I believe, it came out that uh, Boyce Watkins was none other than a front man for another man who just happens to be Asian, not black. Basically, Boyce Watkins was selling hope and dreams to black people. And Charles Wu basically busted him out. And I was definitely over Boyce Watkins when he wouldn't even like break a sever ties with Charles Wu. But what I will give Boyce is that he introduced me to this woman here. Now, Michi X is a spoken word artist. And um, I came to know her last summer when she did this whole thing on Bill Cosby. All right, the Bill Cosby case. Uh, Boyce Watkins eventually brought her into the Fly Nubian Queen Network. Now, Fly Nubian Queen Network is under Boyce Watkins' umbrella of some of the business that, businesses that he has. He's She's... Fly Nubian Queen is under that umbrella. So like I said, I became the I came to know who she was because of that. And I would listen to her often. Now, if you are not used to somebody being cutthroat and abrasive and direct in your face, Michi X is probably not the person you want to listen to because she is just all of that. She is all of that, matter of fact. All right. Um, I've heard her, you know, on R. Kelly. I agree with her when she talked about R. Kelly. Cardi B, there was a lot of good stuff that she has shared over the course of time, like I said, but she is abrasive. And some of that, you know, some of the vulgarity can be a little turn offish. And I can understand why people would be off put by her because of that. But nonetheless, I still listen to her. I still tune in. If I don't like her message, you know, I don't, you know, it, it's whatever. I go on with my life. Nothing changes, right? But um, recently, Michi X has decided to inject herself into some situations regarding boys. Boys is going to be the common denominator, as you'll see in a moment. So boys over time has had some issues with some of the people that used to work for him. Yvette Carnell, uh, he didn't pay Yvette Carnell the right way. He didn't, sometimes she wouldn't get paid and he would pay her peanuts, basically. And so Yvette Carnell went on to do her own thing. And I, I watch her too. Um, Yurima Karama, he didn't pay him the way he was supposed to pay him. Paris Milan, you know, it took her for, she finally, when she finally got paid, boys, you know, pitched a bitch about it. You know, he was, I just think that he had some very sloppy organizational issues and shady business practices. But um, in the late summer, Paris Milan put boys on blast, okay? Boyce is also being recently sued 
in court by uh, a woman that used to work on his network too, Maria Lloyd. I think her last name is something different now. But as it turns out, Boyce also had a, a relationship with this woman. But now she is suing him because he cut her out of some deals. Okay. So Boyce has some issues and he would be the last person in the world I would be defending. But Michi X has got, gotten on her platform and decided to defend Boyce Watkins against all of these different issues. Okay. Specifically Paris Milan. I'm just going to stick with the Paris Milan thing for a minute. She has basically uh, blasted Paris Milan and said some really, really negative things about Paris. And basically Paris is lying and that didn't happen that way. Now, me personally, I think, I believe Paris. I believe that boys didn't do what he was supposed to do. Now, did she get paid eventually? eventually? Yes, she did. She even said that she got paid. It's just the way boys does business. He is sloppy and he's not a good businessman. Okay, he's just not. Now, does that equate con conning or being a con artist? I don't know. I don't know. People have to make their own decisions when it comes to boys. All right. I've never uh, bought anything from the black business school. I, I, I wanted to, I consider doing it, but you know, based on his reputation, I stepped away from boys. What I think, where I think Michi made a mistake is, is defending him. I think that Boyce is not one of those people that you can defend. Me personally, I don't think I would defend this man. He has too many strikes against him to defend him. And now it has turned to the point where now they're going back and forth and they're trading jabs and they're going, I mean, they're calling each other names. And it's just gotten really, really bad out here in these YouTube streets amongst all of these women. Another thing that I felt like Michi shouldn't have done is you know, for weeks now, her and Tommy, Tommy Sotomayor have been going back and forth with each other. Now, if you don't know who Tommy is, Tommy is a hater of black women. Tommy hates black women and he has never said anything productive or nice about black women. He generalizes all of us. We're all whores. We're ghetto. We all food stamps. I mean, this is a man that just denigrates black people, black women specifically. So he had been coming at Michi's neck for a while and she was giving it right back to him. And I was like excited because I was loving to see that she was giving him what he was giving her until Michi appeared on his platform. And, you know, they were going back and forth. And next thing you know, they're giggling. And this woman who I consider a bulldog turned into a kitten. And that was just off putting to me because I see her as somebody that just can rip your head off uh, verbally. She can verbally rip your head off. And when she got with Tommy, I was just surprised because Tommy has said some really messed up things about Michi. He has said some really, really bad things. Now, Michi is biracial. I don't know if a lot of people know, but her father is white. Her mother is black. Tommy went as far as to call her mother a ghetto gagger. If you don't know what a ghetto gagger is, that's a porn site where black women are basically sexually abused by white men. Okay. You sat up here and, and giggled and kiki with a man who called your mother a ghetto gagger. I can never understand that. However, they can't all get a little, the women of YouTube, the women in the black conscious community are all fighting. She can go on Tommy's platform and kiki with them after a while, but they can't come together, her and Paris and all the others and come to some kind of like consensus or even have a civil discussion. Right now they're fighting. I mean, threats are being thrown back and forth amongst these women, and it's terrible to see. This is not uh, 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 me condemning Michi. I like Michi. I like Paris. I like Yvette. I don't like Cynthia G. Sorry, I'm not going that far. But I like these women, I, and I wish that they could get along and come together for the common good by taking down Tommy, for instance. I think it would be great if all these women could come together and take down Tommy. Well, recently... Michi got into it and uh, with this woman named Anti Afro Svengalas. If you don't know who she is, she has made many, many, many videos about Umar, and now she's on Boyce's neck, rightfully so. Okay, I support that. But Michi was on her platform a few days ago, and she was talking about how she had taken in a couple of kids that had been put out by their parents, and she was just taking care of them, letting them stay with her until you know they have other arrangements made. But she just took these kids in. Well, Anti Afro Svengalas made a video basically condemning Michi for this and saying that it could be criminal and that she's not 
doing the right thing. Now, me personally, I think Michi is doing the right thing. I think that's noble of her to take in these children who, any other reason, if their parents put them out and they had nowhere else to go, you know, I personally think it's a good thing. I understood anti afro Spengali's reasoning, I guess the legal part of it, but nonetheless, this woman did a noble thing and I commend Michi for that. But right now, these two women are now fighting with each other. I mean, threats are being made from Michi supporters, um, anti-Afro Spengali supporters are into it with Michi supporters. And it's just a freaking mess on YouTube. I'm telling you, listen, if these women were able to come together, they would be powerful. All these women would be able to come together. And like I said, take down the con artists of YouTube. That would be amazing. The problem is... Some people feel like Michi is actually working for a con artist, which, you know, that's therein lies the problem. I hope Boyce does right by Michi. I hope that she doesn't have to eat crow in the end because he's, he does her wrong. Because like I said, he has done a lot of people wrong and I hope she doesn't live to regret the, the day that she decided to work for him. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I hope that these women can come together for the greater good because I think they all have something really important to say and they are more powerful together than they are apart. So black conscious community, I want y'all to get it, get it together. Get it together, y'all.